so nice yeah, to nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And thank you very much for the film. So I don't know how we're doing for time. I, I wanted to to speak about some some points if I have ten minutes or something of the film. Yeah, Please. Nikos, how are you? Yeah. So I absolutely agree with sure. everything that has been said so far. The film is wonderful. I also wanted to say that you start watching this film and you see Renee Fleming talking about beauty and then the title music is the overture to the magic flute that's our flete and you're saying okay it's definitely going to be something beautiful and I actually thought that if Karajan was alive the conductor he would be all over this because he was interested in autonom autonomic responses to art music in particular since the early 70s he was conducting sometimes wearing uh, EKG sensors so, uh, I mean, for, for experiments, you know, for concerts. So, um, just a few things I wanted to say, a few points. One was about sensor integration, about making sense of a place. This, I think, is very important. We see the, the, the lack of this in some buildings. I mean, in, in some cases, in the New Acropolis Museum in Athens, you walk over glass corridors. I mean, it's a nice museum, but uh, in, on, on the inside. You walk over glass corridors and you feel, some old people feel not safe because they have conflicting information uh, they, they they step on a, on a solid plane but their eyes tell them that there's nothing there um, because the senses should make what we call a nomological network that should make sense of the whole place and this this doesn't happen in some in some buildings and you know this is the equivalent of what what happens if you have uh, paroxysmal positional vertigo uh, you get different information about your position from your eyes and to, from your inner ear. That's that's quite annoying. Uh, yeah, I wanted also to say that we're definitely a, a pattern recognizing machine. Uh, it was already mentioned that babies look at faces and they prefer attractive faces. Uh, this is the same reason why people look f look at pictures of Mars and they see sculpted faces on it because that's what they want to recognize and. Uh, I mentioned in the last meeting that we have even a snake recognizing circuit in our thalamus, so that is something very specific, and we need this for survival. Many people said that. So, obviously, the tabula rasa idea is is very bad. Of course, it is in vogue now with the so the whole the whole concept that everything is socially constructed, but science does not support this. Um, the, the idea of uh, us being connected to ourselves and to other people in places that work, actually, I think this is a wonderful way to say it, Professor Ellen said it, because this also um, describes uh, some of the functions of the default mode network, a network in our brains, that is related to self-reference, to emotions about oneself, but also the theory of mind, to thinking about other people's feelings and emotions and we know we now know that the default mode network is used to perceive fractals specifically fractals so all these seem to, to come together it's what Nikos was saying information from different points seem to come together um, the, the points of uh, coherence fascination and hominess I would say it's very important and also what Professor Chatterjee said and also relevant to social housing in India and other places because often these new sanitized places um, lack especially hominess but even even fascination and coherence because people just see them as as cold and remote and irrelevant to them regarding the different levels of consciousness of conscious um, I would just like to, to clarify for the people who maybe are not uh, neuroscientists when we say sympathetic and parasympathetic inputs we mean sympathetic and parasympathetic inducing inputs yes so we see something we experience something that's a central nervous system event and that induces sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, um, reactions to the body as we see for example with the galvanic uh, skin response and this is what of course translates into um, in, into, into health consequences, yes. But there's also another level in which uh, consciousness and unconscious events are, are divided into. It was already mentioned that we are conscious only of 50 bits per second of the, of the millions of bits that come in 
of the information and eye tracking as mentioned is is a way to understand the pre-attentive processing which is pre-conscious of, of the scene and, and also beyond that which is um, a way to quickly react to stimuli which is important for our survival there is the notion uh, by some neuroscientists uh, Zeki is one of them who is one of the founders of uh, neuroaesthetics that there are actually many micro consciousnesses in our, in our brain and that is verified in a way by phenomena like the the motion vision of the blind there are people that have that, that are blind but can understand motion because the area responsible for for motion is intact whereas the central visual area is is is, uh, is damaged so uh, we, we seem to be made up from different micro consciousnesses and uh, what we consider as ourself is a, is a, is an emergent as an emergent whole and of course intuition is subconscious computation that's what gut feeling is and people should not disregard it uh, I have a quote actually from a paper from Zeki which I, I, I loved when I saw it is that people should not forget that the brain is a superb measuring device that continually executes measurements be they measurements of light intensity or the degree of hate or desire so that's very important so gut feeling is, is very important and of course, uh, as you, you mentioned in the film, the, the disappearance of the, the term beauty, and as Anne also mentioned, um, and yet we seem to have a specific area in the brain, the medial or the frontal cortex, which is what always lights up when we consider something beautiful, uh, and even it doesn't have to be a building, it can be music, it can be mathematics. So. There is something specific about beauty and how our brain reacts to it. Um, the sublime seems to be different um, philosophically, but also neuroscientifically, as it has been proven. And my my personal idea is that this is why uh, luxury skyscrapers uh, are attractive to some as housing because they have an aspect of this danger. Uh, that causes that, uh, that that creates the sense of the sublime. Or at, at the same time, they are dreadful as social housing because they have none of that. They only have alienation. And of course, what is it about nature? What is it about the nature of of, of what is it about nature that creates these effects? And I think this is a very important task for neuroscience to explore. I think Nikos is a is is a pioneer in this because he was the first person to try to to codify what is it about the um, the geometry of nature that translates into these effects on us and that can be found in architecture or not in in many cases and um, finally um, the things that Nicholas Boy Smith mentioned about music I think it's a very good point difference is that architecture is imposed on us music is not imposed on us and i would also like to to, to 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 close closing just to say that there are i mean i have written about this some years ago i think there are similarities and there are definitely similarities between language and music and i think we can also find similarities between these two and and architecture and shape um i think that the the, the, the danger about design becoming prescriptive um, is not well is not real because it will be the equivalent of saying that music composition becomes prescriptive if you follow the laws of harmony or that uh, you are um, somehow uh, not free to, la to write literature uh, as you should to express yourself if you follow grammar and syntax so I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the grammar and syntax of of, of, um, of architecture as um, codified through those forms and as reflected in our in our brains. So.